I want to talk financial markets here with Scott Bauer. He's joining us this morning, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy, to take a look at the dollar rates and some of the other foreign currencies. Scott, welcome. Good morning to you. Let's begin with morning, Greenback. Man. Good morning, which has been very much range bound, right? Much like the Fed officials we heard from yesterday, it seems like they're all just waiting for more information. Yeah, uh, lots of caution here. And, you know, the dollar is not just trading on what the Fed officials are saying, but also what's going on in the ECB, Bank mm -hmm. of England, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, you know, if, if it weren't for the fact that other central banks are probably going to cut sooner than we are, uh, we might see a little bit of a weaker dollar. So I think that's underpinning, you know, the dollar a little bit here. Yes, it's off the 105, 105 half level, you know, is it going to break through 104? Maybe. But, you know, I don't see a lot of downside in the interim here while all of the rhetoric coming out of the ECB, Bank of England and the like is that they're going to cut rates, you know, perhaps even next month. You know, Scott, I like the word caution. I think this chart is a pretty good uh, exhibition of that, right? You've got um, uh, the focus, as you pointed to, the, on the ECB. I mentioned earlier in the show, we get some UK CPI data. I think it's tomorrow morning, expected show easing. Uh, the BOE, right? As far as I remember, we have you on record and your expectations that the ECB is going to cut first. You're going to get a run for yep. your money because I think we'll get a look at the RBA overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. And, and there are about a 40% chance that they could cut, maybe uh, a little yep. bit less than a 50% chance. But do you still feel like the ECB is going to be the first to go? I, I do, though. You know, this news that's out of the Bank of England here, they went from 9-0 in the last meeting uh, you know, not to cut. Now seven to two. Okay. They are definitely getting a little bit more dovish, but I am sticking with the okay. ECB. I think we will see a June cut there. Okay. How about rates here, Scott? Because one could look to the U.S. dollar and argue, all right, this has been a contributing factor, the rally we've seen in stocks. And that's sort of what we're trying to do here this morning is mount up and establish what's really in this rally, because it's not just NVIDIA anymore, right? It's not just the Magnificent no. Seven. I mean, this is a bit more broad-based, and there are multiple contributing factors. Uh, one of those is much like the greenback range-bound contained yields. Yeah, it's stubbornly elevated levels, but not necessarily going going anywhere fast. No, exactly right. So this has been a rally that we've seen across, you know, most asset classes, you know, from from the equities to even bonds, you know, going back a, a, a week, two weeks or so into the crypto market now. Yeah. So this is a, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, I believe it's a little bit too euphoric of a rally. I don't really see the rationale hmm. behind it hmm. other than, you know, that data that came out last <laughs> week, which, boy, we, we get, you know, one piece of data after two, three consecutive months of hot data, then we get something that's a little bit cooler. Hard to hard to buy into that just yet. I mean, one could argue that was the case, though, coming into February, March, right, with yields uh, at these stubbornly elevated levels. The market has really shrugged off the negative and focused on, focused on the positive. Caution, the word you used, I'd use the word stability, right? Balance has been the word that the Fed's used quite a bit. I mean, definitely different things, but all sort of feeding into the same uh, environment that we've been in and and just kind of uh, uh, getting back to that point I made a second ago in terms of rates not going anywhere fast. I mean, in theory, that's what the market likes to see as well, right? They don't want to see big moves in yields. They're pretty comfortable with the fact that we're just kind of chopping along. Absolutely. The market likes stability. They, yeah. they don't, you know, doesn't like uncertainty. So to me, the data that keeps coming out, I think the market has been expecting the worst. Mm -hmm. and, and it's providing that stability. Exactly. Yeah. So the fact that we haven't seen, yeah. you know, the 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 high data, the the high numbers that mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. the market was looking for, I think that has provided the stability. I feel like it's the bears in us that always kind of uh, the trading floor in us that always kind of hopes for <laughs> oh, that, yeah. you know, big number to come out away from expectations. So we get that big move. Um, but uh, uh, again, now you've got a situation. So you've got the dollar, you've got uh, rates. We were talking earlier in the show about crude oil, uh, a contributing factor, right, to just sort of that range bound contained type trade. But yeah. you also have all of this sort of contributing together, I feel like. You could isolate a few different scenarios, but then you have the confluence of it all combined. It, there, there's no doubt about it. And then, you know, I didn't mention a minute ago, what about what we see uh, not crude, but what about the rest of the metals, right? Gold and yeah, silver yeah. and copper and, you yeah, know, this, this there. rally. Yeah. There, there's nothing that has been left out of this rally here. And, you know, I don't know whether it's stability, whether it's complacency, whether it's FOMO, you know, that, mm -hmm. that people are jumping in here because they don't want to miss out across the board here. 
All I know, Ben, and I harp on this all the time, you've heard me talk about it dozens of times, is, you know, great, you want to stay in a market that's rallying and just kind of grinding higher, that's great, but be proactive and buy that cheap protection. <laughs> Man, with the VIX where it is right now and, and volatility in the S&Ps, uh, you got to buy yeah. that insurance. I you feel just like have to. complacency is one thing, but a false sense thereof is even worse, right? Um, talk yeah. to us a little bit, Scott. Should we start to see things turn? Where do you look for cracks in the dam right now? We seem to be pretty much in that sweet spot. The Fed signaling that so far to begin the week, right? Kind of echoing comments that we've heard over the last couple of months here right now in this sort of wait and see type mode. Uh, for more information, ultimately, the glide paths in the trajectory we're looking for, is it jobs? Is it ultimately inflationary pressure starting to come back into play? Uh, crude oil, again, relatively contained, doesn't seem to be finding that contributing factor. No, it's not. And especially with some of that, you know, maybe risk sentiment in crude off a little bit. You know, yeah. we've been talking about, you know, I thought there was maybe five, ten dollars uh, uh, priced in per per barrel due to geopolitical risks here remember. and 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 that has come off a yeah. little bit it yeah. really has so where are the cracks going to be here i think it's still in the inflationary data i think you know next week end of the month we get pce all eyes are going to be on that if that is a number that comes in in line or lower mm -hmm. great the mm -hmm. market is going to really absorb that if that is one of those numbers though that it you know shows us uh you know we're getting back to the hot stuff here uh, I think we could have a pretty quick drop. Yeah, it sounds to me like you're saying that uh, one or two data points that we've seen as of recent is not a trend make here. We need to be agile and remain vigilant here and on our toes here. Scott, appreciate you joining us here. A solid look at uh, uh, financial markets and, and some of the contributing factors of the stock market rally. We've seen Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy.